All that being said, uh, we were that was a lot. lot you said. Yeah, well, yeah, we're not going to recap, are we? No, we're not. Thank you, God. This. There was just way too much no. to get going. Um, let's let's uh, let's flop down into mailbag together. Oh, oh, oh! oh. You could okay. have phrased that a dozen other ways. <laughs> I know, but that, that would have been seemed, less. That seemed disturbing. appropriate to me at the time. So I get an email from my darling uh, sister-in-law. Oh, yeah, she is a darling. She lives in Colorado. Yeah. Fun fact is the heading, Chris Combs, no relation, and I live in the Colorado County tied for the most deaths by lightning. Well, that's a cheery thought. So I wrote back, congratulations. <laughs> I... <laughs> is there anyone chasing that record? No, that's not what you really want. I don't think you want to stand up there on the platform. I'd like no. to thank my mom for making me an idiot. <laughs> right. Because she said, you know, if you run outside with a metal pole in your hand when lightning's out there, it'll get you. And she was right. Way to go, Ma. Just run out and hold up a one iron. Well, they, apparently they recently had a uh, lightning storm strike kind of thing. Okay. That set fire like three houses. Wowzers. On the whatever the front range is, I'm guessing it's side of the mountains. East side. Yeah. No. Is that east side or west side? Front range, yes. I think, is east side. Let's go with that because that would be the front. If well, as, as we if we read this the country from right to left, and I always read from the right. Remember yeah, those purple mountains, majesty over there with the buffalo yep. running into them, and there were no injuries or anything. But all of a sudden, you know, they had to go snoop. Okay, because that's what reporters do. Yeah, they're snoopy. So, according to the Centers for Disease Control, boo hiss, uh, Colorado has had one of the highest rates of lightning deaths and injuries in the U.S. in recent years. By in recent years, we're talking two thousand one through, I believe, uh, 2006 to 2021. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is when they did this. Yeah. The Weather Service has kept records from 1980. All right. And the last complete year is 2021. And the counties in Colorado, El Paso and Larimer, well, El Paso really actually wins the contest because, well, they both had 10 people killed. Right. El Paso had 84 injured and Larimer only six. I mean... 76, sorry. You clowns in Larimer. You just weren't trying. You got to get out more. It was, what's the word I'm looking for? Disappointing. I'm worried about <laughs> Michelle, though. Yeah, why? She lived in Minnesota where we averaged between one and, basically, the, the rate them, they rate them, right? We're in the one yeah, to yeah. five scale. Yeah, yeah. Then she moved to Two. California. Okay. Which has six to 15. Hmm. Then she came with hubby Gary over to Michigan, six to 15. Mm -hmm. Then they moved down to Alabama, 16 to 30. Mm -hmm. Might have been a stop in there somewhere in some tornado infested or lightning infested area. Okay. And of course, from Alabama, they went right to Colorado and moved to a state that is vying for the championship. No, why, why, I wonder if Pringles why, and Crocs why. will make something special for this, the lightning capital of the world. You know, the worst part is I looked at it and thought, huh. You live in the same county as Chris? That was my takeaway. Um, <laughs> if you're wondering, Florida is leading the way with 88 deaths since 2006. Oh, really? Yeah, lucky us. Um, I think we average something like 28 a year. Average. Some years are overachievers. Yeah. Some are underachievers. The states to avoid if you don't want to get struck by lightning are, like, you know, consistently. Florida. Texas. Colorado, North Carolina, Alabama. Those are the ones with the most lightning deaths. But there was a guy on Johnny Carson's show one time. Who was struck by lightning? A, mil a, a, a bunches of times. It was like wherever he was, he was getting hit by lightning. And it wouldn't kill him. It would like, it, it, one of the times it uh, came in through the side of his head and came out through his opposite the bathroom window. side right. toes. And it blew his boot off. Why does that sound like just wild? Oh, there are more states to avoid. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. All of Those them? were just the deaths. <laughs> okay. The biggies when it comes to deaths and injuries, which are my favorite. Florida, Texas, Colorado, North Carolina, Alabama, Arizona, Georgia, Missouri, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. There are several reasons to avoid a several of those states. This now is just another one. Another one. Guys, by the way, are four times more likely than females to be struck by lightning because they're stupid. 
Thank you. And the average age of a person struck by lightning is 37 years old because they're most likely a guy out golfing and said, uh, one more shot. Yeah, I can I can do this. It's not a problem. It, there's not, <laughs> what? There's lightning in the air. It's not going to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, we, had, anyway. uh, we had a show in the summer, maybe it was two years ago, um, at a county fair. So. And the lightning starts showing up and we shut down. We, you yep. know, it's the first thing you do. And we got guys coming up. Well, can't you just play? It's not raining. <laughs> well, it's not the rain we're worried about, Ace. <laughs> if, you, if we if can see the lightning, it's close enough to hit us. Golf tournaments, um, softball, baseball, football, they all have folks that monitor lightning. Yep. They don't give a hang about the rain as much. Yep. They'll know when the rain should stop things. <laughs> they don't want to learn about the lightning stopping things when it happens. Yep, because it, it stops hearts. Uh, that's a big they problem. Stopped, they, the sun was out, yep. and all of a sudden a horn blows on a, I believe it was the women's tournament last week. Oh, yeah? And sure enough, within five minutes. Here comes the lightning. Clouds rolled over and rain and lightning showed up. Ian actually carries an app on his phone that shows you where the lightning is. Don't use it outside, though, dude, if there's lightning. <laughs> by the way have you ever gone down to your mailbox and seen a dryer sheet in there no apparently it happens periodically do you want to know what it means you know part of me says hell no and the part I, that i always learn to regret goes yeah what apparently mail carriers will leave dryer sheets in mailboxes uh -huh. if there are flying stinging things in or around them we don't like to have fly stingy things yep um box wasps and yellow jackets um it's apparently scented dryer sheets can be used as a preventative measure because wasps and the like hate really aromatic things like eucalyptus citronella even cloves bums yeah exactly <laughs> so you can uh you can put Most them in hippies. yourself if you have if you have stinging insects around your uh, mailbox and no I'll let the I'm gonna I, I'll let the mailman do that <laughs> oh you're gonna have, you're gonna love this right down this go ahead oh there's a new snack coming up for summer Olympics yeah new peanut butter and chocolate candy yeah Reese's yeah Medals. yeah and the run-up to the 2024 paris olympics coming up in july and august do they hand them out with all the condoms the <laughs> the metal shape the medal shaped reese's uh come in special packaging with the symbols of the olympics and team usa that'll make you feel like a champion you know there was a group because of there's people. nothing like eating chocolate and peanut butter that make you there's, make you feel so healthy exactly um, I got a, I got news for you. These days, if I eat two Reese's peanut butter cups, I'm like going, Ew, that was way too much. Um, I do too. And those are the little ones. Yeah. And I love them. This is the thing that kills me. But how, how is this for hyperbole? Will make eating chocolate and peanut butter will make you feel like a champion. Hmm. There's so many other ways to do that. Right? Like having sex on the roof of the dormitory. I was going to say, especially in the Olympic Village. Village. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can feel up a champion most anywhere. <laughs> Reese, you know what I heard? I feel it bad now just about a second. my entire you said, life. feel like a champion, and I heard feel up a champion. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's what's happening. <laughs> okay. Reese's medal. I just look at suppose you're a you know, like a parent of a, a daughter, especially because you know, boys are still there's that weird double standard. Oh yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. And then you have a daughter and going, No. Lady. No. What do you think? We're, re we're renting a hotel. Yeah. The entire thing. With armed guards. Just us. And you're there. Don't you trust me? You I trust. And not, I hate everybody else. The rest of them there, I am not so sure about. But I'd be tempted to do that with my USA. son as well. Yeah, I would too. The Reese's medals are now available nationwide for a limited time in snack standard and king size packages. And that's special. Speaking Crap, of. Now I want to go get one. <laughs> Thanks. Speaking of food. Mm. Yeah. I can't believe how stupid an idea this is. Kentucky oh, Derby. So 
It's probably a big winner. Yeah, Kentucky Derby's coming up, right? Yeah. I'm worried of about course, where this could possibly go. Clothing and food. Are the biggies. Hats are big ones. Right. Many because other you, hats. I mean, people dress for this, man. Oh man, do they ever? It's a it's like going to church. It's like going it's, to Derby clothes. Well, although ever since Secretary, you'll see some of you know, low lifes with yeah, jeans. Yeah, that's true. And, that's true. Usually though, yeah. we're talking the hoy and the poloi. Mm. Many and of the hoy. And the hoity. And the toity? Yes. Them too. M many of the hats you'll see here on the racetrack were months in the making, cost hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars. People will spend like crazy on these. Guess who's involved in it? You ready? Speaking of uh, food. Speaking yeah. of food. Speaking of food. There's your hint. Speaking of food. Hormel. Panera. Of course. <laughs> has a particularly fascinating hat in store for the most exciting two minutes in sports. <sighs> It's a fascinator style hat made from a bread bowl. Okay, it's not an actual bread bowl, but it looks like it one. Well, and that's so, better. Unless someone tries to do it. With an it. actual bread bowl, you'd have bird <laughs> friends. And you know, if it's sort of like wax fruit, right? <laughs> Look, Larry, there's another one. <laughs> that's the kind of chewy. You want this one? I can't, man. I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> and they're taking me to the doctor because my that one guy's two medals and I'm done. My bowels are now blocked. <laughs> it's, Don't eat the one with cheese soup. It's just sad. <laughs> so well, that's it for all my update stuff. Let's go to the comments. The real mailbag now, yes. Uh this is True Really News episode 855. From Old Fat Man. Hey, old fat man. Says Tony, every time you say snark, I picture in my mind that skit from the Carol Burnett show where Tim Conway was telling that Siamese elephant joke where they are joined at the trunk. And if they'd sneeze, they just went. Nark, nark. I forgot all about that. That is one of the funniest things you'll ever watch. I tell you, you can find some great. No, man, the funniest thing Carol Burnett ever did was the Gone oh, with the Wind parody. That's true. Saw it in the window and I had. And it was actually the drapes with the the bar still. Yeah, in it. <laughs> it was spectacular. See, the whole goal of that show was not to entertain us. It was to entertain. Yeah. It was to see if they could crack up the other people on stage. Oh, and Carol used to try. We can't break that wall. We can't break that wall. And that was the funniest part about the show. That was. I really she, enjoyed it. You know, and I wonder how long she actually put up with that because for a while it was like. We can't, we can't, oh, what the hell? Yeah, I don't know I when mean, it changed. It's just easier because she got into it towards the end too. Yes, she, had, she did. Although, honestly, as talented as Carol Burnett is, and she's a very talented lady. Yep. Tim Conway and Harvey Corman are in another, another league. Oh, and it's so funny because Tim by himself doesn't do that much for me. No, Him I mean, with the, Harvey, the little old man thing he does is pretty funny. Yeah. But without but it's Harvey, not as funny as Mr. Wiggins. Yeah, right. Oh, or and, any, anything. And the first time I saw Dorf on golf, you know. Dorf was good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, ap apropos of uh, uh, Titter episode 011. 11? Uh huh. My, I can't uh, remember yesterday, much less then. From Targus 200. Now, remember, Targus was the guy who said, oh, Good. You only have another thousand, so I can get you know I can catch up. Yeah. <laughs> worthy, so, worthy goal. Yeah, worthy goal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Funny as always. Keep up the good work, guys. Started watching at episode zero zero zero. So our pilot episode. We had a pilot episode. Yeah, we did. Remember, I said let's do Is one that for before practice? you recast, and I came in. Yeah. No. <laughs> But he's going to get to watch the iteration of the show. Oh, as you know, it grows and the intros and and, and well, as it gets longer and, and longer. longer. Right. <laughs> but I do love the fact that he's he's a dedicated fan. Make sure to hit those likes, Targus. Please, please, all the way along, if you would. You don't even have to listen; just go right through them. Like, 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 like. Uh, it sounds like click, 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 but it's not. <laughs> 
<laughs> Apropos of Titter episode 015, guess who? Chris? Targus 200. No, that was your guess. Let me guess uh, again. Okay. Targus 200? Yes. I was going to go. Funny as always, keep up the good work, guys. Um, I I can't wait for Targus to hit, what is it, 41, 43, 47, the day the podcast died? When we do oh, Raymond Burr. There, there is no podcast. <laughs> it's just us wetting our yeah, pants. Pretty much. And uh, I can't yeah. I can't remember the number of it, and I'm not going to look it up. Nope. Uh, Targus will let us know when he gets it. And there. then 486 is another big milestone. Which one? 486. 486? Why is that's that? That's where we learned that the answer to everything is actually the number 58. Oh, that's true. 486. You're right. Thank you. Oh. Um. After that, there's not much. I mean, it's just, you know. <laughs> it's just, you know, a bunch of silly stuff. So find out where we laugh for like 14 minutes. <laughs> Because and, and, that's entertaining. And I'm saying, okay, pull it together. We got to finish this one. Tony's he's going, no. <laughs> no. And then I do, and you start laughing. <laughs> that would help you. Or. My favorite one is when Tony says, I can't see. <laughs> Was that what my... Yeah, we teared up so much. Oh, I mean, okay. we were just in... We were having I don't a fit. Do, see, and I'm not a laugher till I cry kind of guy. No. I mean, you see some... like. Girls, especially, right? Mm -hmm. They start mm -hmm. laughing a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep. No, I don't do that. Very seldom. Jimmy Carr will do that occasionally on eight out of ten cats, which well, is, is kind of cute. Well, and it's um, occasionally something really, really funny gets said. So, so he's one of those guys. Oh, uh, in touch with his feelings. Watching outtakes of eight out of ten cats on YouTube is a great pleasure. It is hilarious, especially when you get to Sean Locke being Sean Locke and his doing the whole winning the rectum of the year competition. <laughs> it's like rear of the year with gloves on. So it's, oh, you got to watch it sometime, Tone. It'll kill you. It'll kill you. Apropos, this is true. Wow, even the zebra shaking his head, no, and he can't. That's it. <laughs> Apropos, this is true, really news, episode 857. Patrick Reed, our man in Liverpool, says... Vladdy. Ma'am? Apparently... No, I'm not letting go. The name of the town is Nuts Ford. And I don't know what we'd said. We must have said Nutsford. Like Harrison's or Newt's brother? Ford? Nuts Ford. Henry's long-lost Oh, relative? yeah, it's the K-N-U-T. Newtsford is probably what I said. Canute. Canutesford. So apparently it's Nutsford. Nuts Ford. Where is this? In Britain. Who cares? Yet another British place name that doesn't sound like it looks. We could mess it up big time, and most <laughs> of the Brits will go, well, they messed that up. And <laughs> exactly. Head on. Exactly. It's done. Now, where was I? Okay, now that's right, it. Right, ma'am? <laughs> Mum? No, that's your mother. <laughs> Ooh. Your mother? As... Who was it? One of the detective shows. Mm -hmm. You can call me boss. You can call me governor. You do not call me mum. I am not your mother. I will kick you from <laughs> here you to there. Call me ma'am. Wow, a British show with a brain cell. And then I met Patrick, and things change. You know, happens. <laughs>